All right, let's talk about segment trees. All right, let's go straight into it. We want a data structure that can do a point update and a range query. For our point update, we want it. So, so our segment tree maintains this uh, imaginary array called f, and our point update is to add x to f sub i, given i and x. And then the query returns or computes the sum of f sub i plus f sub i plus 1 plus blah, 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 plus f sub j. So what if we do it with a regular array? So a sub i represents f sub i. Then our update is a sub i plus equals x. That's O of 1. Very good. But our query, for our query, we have to uh, iterate through all of i through j. And that could be O of n. It's really bad. All right, so what if we do it with a prefix somewhere so we get faster query? So P sub i now represents F sub i plus blah, blah, blah plus uh, F sub 1 plus <clears throat> blah, blah, plus F sub i. So our query, for our query, we just return P sub j minus P sub i minus 1. If you know how prefix sum arrays work, and that is O of 1. But if we want to update some value in F, we have to update every everything in the suffix of P. So that's still O of N. Okay, so now how does a segment tree combine both of those ideas to make both of the operations efficient? The idea is to divide arrays into segments and keep track of the sums of the segments, kind of like the prefix sum. So here we have circles representing an array of eight elements. And for the segment tree, the whole array is a segment. And then for each segment, you divide it into its left half and right half as the children of the larger segment, because it's got a segment tree, so it's represented by a tree. And then you keep dividing until you get segments that represent an individual element in the array. So since this is a full binary tree, the height is O of log, which is a good sign. And uh, if you look at the middle, all right. Uh, okay. oh, I need to turn it off. All right. Um, okay, so if you look at the bottom layer, there's n segments because they represent each element in the array. And then the layer above that has n over two segments. The layer above that has n over four. So if you add them up, there should be less than two n segments. So the number of segments or the space complexity would be O of n. And to query a range, we just find all the segments that are completely inside the range by going down the tree. And then by this construction, it is guaranteed that those segments are disjoint. So if we just add up the sums of those segments, we get the sum of the range. So suppose we query this range. We start from the root. And then since it's not completely inside the range, we look at its left and right child. Children. Yeah, that's not completely inside. So we look at its left child, which is completely outside the range. So we just don't look at it. So we look at the right child. And then its left child is completely outside. So we look at the right child. And that's completely inside. So we add the values that's stored in that segment to our sum. And since we're done here, we backtrack and then look at the right half. Left half is completely inside, so we add that to our sum. And then that segment is completely inside, so we add that to our sum. So now we're done, and we see that we, we haven't overcounted, and we counted everything in our range. So that's exactly the sum of that range. Any questions? Yeah. Why is this uh, over log n? Like, why are there only log n segments? Like, why wouldn't you end up? They haven't count O of n segments or do O of n work to do this. So uh, your, your recursion only goes to the bottom layer uh, twice, one for the left bound and one for the right bound. So since the height is all log n, the, the recursion is also all log OK, sure, I, I get that. But do you guys see why it's log? Okay, like there's, uh, I, I won't, I won't talk, but, but I think this is, that's an important thing. 
You don't see why it's not going to be actually tied when you do something. Here's the pseudocode. So exactly as we just described, if the current segment is completely outside, then we abort. If the current segment is completely inside, we return the sum of that segment. Otherwise, we recurse down the tree. Okay. So any question on this slide? Yeah, so do you go past the entire list of children? Uh, there's only two so, like, children per two. node. Okay. Yeah. Um, so like for each child, you, you like you check the child. Right? Like you keep going on until so then yeah. Is it would it be possible for you to like, actually like check every check multiple subtrees? Right. Oh but I guess if it covers an entire segment, you don't have to go. Yeah. So like for for the left bound of a range. Either your right child is the left bound or your right child is completely inside and the left bound is in your left child. Mm -hmm. So you would immediately abort when you get to the right child. Mm -hmm. So you only reach the bottom twice. And to up update an element, you just find the node in the bottom layer that corresponds to that element and then update every node on the path. Okay, let's see what that means. Suppose we want to update this, this node the element there. Start from the roots and then keep going down, down the node that contains that index until you find the actual node. You update that value. And since the value of that node is changed, the parent, which is the sum of that node and something else, also change. Like also has to be changed. So you backtrack and update the values of its, its parents or ancestors. And to show that in pseudocode. Okay, this is also O of login because you just go down and go back up. Pseudocode, if your segment is represents that single element, then you add X to the sum. Otherwise, you choose the branch that has that index to recurse. And then after that, you have to update the sum of your current node with the updated sum of your child. Does this slide make sense? Okay. Jason? All right. And uh, for some extensions. Uh, so far, we've only talked about uh, summation for update and summation for query. We can easily change the update from I guess, summation to assignment. So before we had this, plus equals x, we can just change it to equals x to change it to assignment. And then to change it to bit, bitwise or, it's it's the same thing, we just change it. So query is a little bit more complicated. Suppose we want a minimum instead of summation over a range. There are two places that we have to change. One is in the update where you update the parent node after you update the child node, you have to Okay, before we had the sum is the sum of the left segment plus the sum of the right segment. And you have to change it to the min of the left segment. Min between the min of the left segment and the right segment. And then for query, you also have to change how you combine the results. Okay. Then you can also do GCD, like so. Does the slide make sense? Any questions on this? Okay. So we can actually uh, make it easier than what we just showed to change the operations on a segment tree. You can just have an update function and a merge function. So if we change this line to seg value is update the old value with a new value, and then from merge, we're merging the results of the left and right subsegments. You just have a merge function. And for query, you also change this part to merge. Yeah, I'll get back to this. Then we only need to 
define these two functions to change our uh, operations on the segment. Tree. So for summation, to update a old value with x, we just add it to it. And then if we want to merge two values, we add them. If we want assignment updates, then we just disregard the old value and return a new value. And for minimum queries, we determine if they need to merge. And I guess one detail to be careful of is here. The identity is returned whenever your segment is outside of the query range. So you you want this you want this element or not, you want this value to not affect your final result. So for summation, you want to return zero because zero plus anything is still that thing. So you want to return the identity of whatever operation you're using. So for minimum, you want to return infinity because the minimum between infinity and any other value is that value. Does did that explanation make sense? Yeah. Oh, so, so we're doing this using recursion. So if you see this, if you're at a parent segment, you take the query value of your child nodes and then you merge them. And then at the root node, you're going to return the merged value of all the query return, return values. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're going to have some some of these trash values in there, you don't want them to change your final result. So you have to be careful of it. So for an example, problem, given this permutation, find the number of pairs i, j, such that i comes before j, but pi is greater than pj. This is called number of inversions, generate. So suppose we have this permutation two, four, one, and three. Then the inversions are two and one, four and one, and four and three. Okay. So these are the pairs of the index indices that satisfy the condition. So the answer is three. Makes sense so far? Uh, okay, for some observations, we can cap this value by iterating over j, the index. And then for each j, we find the number of values that we have already seen that are greater than p sub j. So in this example, so the j starts from one. So we look at two and we haven't seen any values. So there's nothing that's greater than two. Then we look at four. There's nothing that we've seen that's greater than four. So nothing yet. We look at one. And we've seen two, which is greater than one. So we add one to our answer. Wait, did I see something? Oh, yeah, four is also greater. So, so the answer right now is two. And then we look at three. Only four was greater than three. So add one to our answer, so our answer is three. So we can keep track of what value we have seen using a segment tree. I'm calling that when we get to the index. So the segment tree is basically an array of like, have we seen this value? If, if we've seen this value, then segment tree at i equals to one. If not, then it's zero. Does that make sense with this update call we have here? Okay. Then at any time, the number of values that we have already seen that are greater than p sub j is given by the query from p sub j plus one to n. Any questions on that? No, I don't see an example. See an example. Uh, then I guess I'll just do it on this example. So we had two, four, one, three. And then our segment tree initially is zero, 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 zero. Okay, and then we look at two first. And then so the number of values we have seen that are greater than two is given by the query on the segment tree from three to four. So that's a zero. 
Okay, now we have seen two, so we can set uh, we can set this to one. That's the update. That's like update to one. Does it make sense so far? Uh, two here is the okay. So right now the index is one. There is one. Oh, this, uh, these, these are different, I guess. So this is P, and then this is the segment tree. I'll just call it F. <clears throat> and then F sub I is whether we've, whether we've seen I before. Part it is zero one. Yeah, it's a zero one. So uh, does it make a little bit more sense now? Okay. Yeah. So for j equals two, p sub j is four, and then we want to count the number of values that are greater than four that we've seen, but there's none. So we would like call query five to four is gonna give us zero. And then now we've seen four, so we would update this, have we seen it value array to one. And then, and then we look at j equals three, where pj is one. Then we want to, want to see how many values have we seen that are greater than one which we find by calling query from two to four. And then if you look at it, the sum is two. And then we've seen one, so we set this to one. And then for j is four, pj is three. So for the value, number of values greater than three that we've seen, Maybe after. Uh, what do you think the query call should be? What's the query that should be done? Uh, so when PJ was one, we queried from two to four because we wanted to know how many values were between two and four that we already have. So now we're just in. Inversions for the right number is three. So it be zero to four? Uh, or one to four? Remember, we want to find the number of values we've seen that are greater than three. So what's the range that's greater than three? Um, was it five? Yeah, I mean, sure, but like our max here is four, so we just do four to four. So that's because it has to be greater than four, right? So we just add one to four. So this this is a degenerate interval. So it's just going to give us zero. Mm -hmm. And that's actually going to give us one because the sum of this interval is one. So we add all of these up to get answer is three. F is the segment. The array segment tree is representing. And it is representing, have we seen I at index I? Okay, uh, so you understand this approach, right? You want to do another example with like a different permutation and maybe ask them to say yeah. what the seg tree and the query should be. Yeah, sure. Uh, that'd be four again. Like one, four, three, two. Okay, so. I guess first thing, a priori, what are the inversions? Like, what's the answer to the problem? Three, two, three. Okay. Yeah. So that's this three. Okay, so initially these are all zeros, right? Okay, so 
what do we do when J is one? Mm -hmm. Right. Create a two to four, which gives us how many numbers we've seen greater than one, which here is going to be zero. Yeah. And then we want to mark that. Yeah. So we update one with one. It's very hard to use. Yeah. Okay. What about J equals two? Oh. oh, oh, hello. Can I get the rankings? Oh, yeah, no, I'm not talking about that. Because it's. Yeah. 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 PJ is just the given array, right? The given array, the given permutation here, with, which in this case is P and one, four, three, two. Okay, so if PJ is two, what do we do? Yeah, query five, four, which doesn't make sense and gives us zero. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we should do the update first. Oh, yeah. Um, the update. Uh, not two. Yeah, update four to one because this is. This represents, have we seen this value, not this index, right? Yeah, so now this is one. And, and then j equals three. pj is three. Yeah, very four, four. And that's this range, so it's gonna give us one. And, uh, Three with one. Yeah. Uh, Jason, does that? Are you following this? Okay. Oh, thanks. All right, and then. All right, and then J is four, so PJ is two. We would three to four. This range gives us two, and it doesn't matter. Update. What is it? Two one. So the answer turns out to be zero plus zero plus one plus two is three, which we expected. Okay, and now we should understand this. And here is the code. So for each index J, for each index J, add the query to our answer and we update it. Yep. Now for the next example, we want to implement a segment tree with two operations. One is set f sub i to x. And the second one is get max sum. Return the sum maximum sum of a contiguous subarray of the given array, or I guess the current array. So the set part is really easy. Before we had a summation update, now it's just an assignment update. And we can just change that by changing like one line in our second tree. But how do we find the maximum sum of a contiguous subarray? First of all, does, does everyone understand what that means? And we do an example and ask like just like by one white like, yeah. Six, two, one, three, five. 
negative 100. This is hard. Five. <laughs> I, I don't even, I don't know how to count it. Okay, well, please. Obviously, you can't include 100, right? Um, <laughs> okay, so maximum contiguous sum. Yeah. What do you think middle it middle should be? Middle form? The longest. No, no, uh, the, the maximum, maximum sum. sum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess you don't want this and uh, yeah, I guess I guess if you had like seven one two negative six two one three four. So before it's it's this, right? But if there's a seven here, change it, right? pretty much change. Oh like that, change that's the query one, operation. If you change the one to a seven, that yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah. sure. If if you change it to seven, <laughs> that's that's better. Then the new answer should be this whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So now that we understand what it's asking for, and we know that we're we're doing it on a seg tree, the problem boils down to how do you merge the results of the two halves of a segment? So like if you have the max maximum contiguous sum of your right half and the maximum contiguous sum of your left half, how do you find the maximum? Contiguous sum of the combined segment. So I'll give you some time to think about it. All right, that's that's the idea. So, so the maximum contiguous sum in the in the combined segment is either the maximum sum in the right array or in the left, or it could go across the two segments. So the, the problem is to is that how do you find the the, the one that goes across? You would have to have the maximum prefix of the right half and the maximum suffix of the left half. And there's another problem that comes up. How do you how do you maintain the maximum prefix of some segment? So if you have this segment and it's two halves, you have the maximum prefix of the right half and the maximum prefix of the left half. How do you find the maximum prefix of the combined segment? It's such a classic problem. You probably do you like search for it on the segment tree? What do you mean by yeah. search? You know the segment, and then you have the prefix, the longest prefix of the left one and on the right one. Yeah. You have two cases. So either it's just the left one, or it's the left one, the entire left one, plus the right one. All right. That's why you got it. <laughs> so we need to be able to somehow figure out whether it's the whole left one is the largest prefix or if it's just this prefix. Yeah. Uh, so this is your big segment. This is your left and right segment. So suppose this is your max prefix here. This is your max prefix here. Then your max prefix for the big segment is either this or this. Do you agree? Yeah. Jason? Mm -hmm. So if you know like the like the largest prefix of the first half? Yeah. Or the entire left half plus the larger prefix. No, I have no idea. Okay. Wait, what if you have like negative like one thousand something? Like at the very end of the first half. At the very then so then you would take it. Yeah, so oh, you okay. take the maximum of these two. But then that wouldn't be a prefix of the larger segment. Because it has to be the, the, yeah, they have to start it with uh, yeah, you assume the orange one is And then and then you can say like, well, okay, either the right endpoint is within the first segment, in which case it's a prefix of the first segment, so let's take max prefix in the first segment, or the, the, the endpoint is in the second segment, in which case it's going to be a prefix of the second segment plus the entire first segment. 
right. Okay, so so this means we also have to keep track of this sum of the entire segments, right? So in total, we have to keep track of four things: the maximum segment sum, maximum prefix sum, maximum suffix sum, and the sum of the whole segment. Do we agree? So to uh, keep track of, or to yeah, keep track of the maximum contiguous segment sum, we have to have prefix sum and suffix sum. And to have these two, we have to have the sum of the whole segment. So is it not suffix sum? Uh, it's, it's the same as prefix, except okay. like the okay. other the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does this slide look good? Can I what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I shared my whole screen. Yeah. So then our merge would be like this. So the sum of the whole segment is just left sum plus right sum. That, that one is easy. And the prefix we we talked about it. It's the either the left prefix or the sum of the left segment plus the right prefix. Look at the suffix is the same thing, either the right suffix or the left suffix plus the right half, right sum. And then we also talk about this. The max contiguous sum is then either the one in the left, the one in the right, or the max suffix of the left half plus the max prefix of the right half. All right, cool. Uh, then, then we're done with this. We just, yeah, that's that's our whole segment tree because the other parts don't change. Yeah. Why is so if the prefix is the a sum plus b prefix? When the also the max. How how does it? Yeah, so like think about where where the prefix ends. Like I was saying, the prefix ends within a the left segment. Then you'll take you'll take the left one, and if it ends inside b, then you'll take the right. Yeah. Like if the max like among the max prefixes, or like among yeah. Oh, a suffix and b prefixes are the segments. Yeah. A is for left half, B is for right half. Yeah. I was getting confused with that. Okay. All right. Is there any more questions on this slide? Then we go to our next example, which is kind of different because we still have the assignment for updates, but for a query, we find the minimum index such that f sub i is greater than or equal to x. Other, uh, if we can't find it, we output negative one. So this is. This is different from what we had before because it's more like a search than a query a sum of a range. So any ideas? You don't have to have ideas because it's difficult. Uh, I don't have the uh, this is kind of different because we're finding a minimum index. And anything that's O of N wouldn't, wouldn't work because you would just linearly search through the array. Okay, I guess one one direction to think about is if you're trying to find a minimum index, you want to go to your left half as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So when can you go to your left half? So if you can change in, uh, yeah. 
Um, so if it contains something greater or equal to x, yeah. then if you think about it, then the max value of that left half segment is greater or equal to x. So we use a max subtree for each segment. If the maximum in the left, left subsegment is greater or equal to x, then the answer is in the left subsegment. Then we go to the left. Otherwise, we search the right if it exists. If you can't find it in the right subsegment, then we output the one. So this is called binary search, binary searching on a segment tree. I guess like you could look at the max of the current node, and if the max of the current node is less than x, then you can use that node. I guess that too. Okay, so then our query is pretty simple. Yeah, so if we've gone down to a single element, we just check if it's less than x or greater equal to x. If it's less than x, then there doesn't exist an element greater equal to x in the entire array. Otherwise, we return the current index, we have found it. Otherwise, if our segment is not a single element, check if the max in the left side is greater equal to x. If so, we search in the left, otherwise we search in the right. Questions on this slide? Yeah, you just go down once. Okay, now here's a practice problem. If you want to do it yourself, you can. I will go through the implementation myself later. And uh, if you want this, you can either type this link or I guess go to this link, which is link for the slide. Microphone. Okay, can we rephrase how a ant, an ant might win? Or like, be set free? Yeah, it divides every ant in the, from L to R. So, what what would that be? Mm -hmm. Right, GCD of the entire segment. So an ant is set free if it's the GCD of the entire segment. So the number of ants that set free are set free is the number of values that equal to the GCD. So I've shown in my slide before that you, you can maintain GCDs on a side tree. But now you also want to maintain the count of how many values in the segment equal to the GCD, right? Let's see how we do that. So SI must be the greatest common divisor of this if the ant i is set free. So the number answer is the number of SI that are equal to the GCD. So we want to keep track of GCD end count for each segment on the secretary. So, and then we just need to figure out how to merge two segments, right? So if we have the GCD of the whole segment, GCD of the left segment, GCD of the right segment, what's, no. We only have GCD of the left and the right. How do we find the GCD of the whole segment? GCD of the Right, because some property of GCD associated. And, yeah. and uh, reflexivity. So the GCD is the GCD of the two GCDs. So how, how about count? What is the count in the larger segment? So if one of the GCDs, if you, if you're new, like you add up the count of each segment where the GCD there, GCD there is equal to the new. Like otherwise right. it's that, that wasn't very good. Like, if you ended up keeping one of the values from the subsegments as the new GCD, then you inherit that count. If the two subsegments had equal GCDs, then you add them together. And otherwise, you put zero. Right. And then if you have the case where it becomes a smaller number than both of them, then it's just zero. Because if there is a number in there, because the count of those is zero. Because if there was a smaller number in there with that value, then the GCD would be lower. Yeah. Did, did all that make sense? 
Sorry, I still can't understand. Oh, the problem? Do you, do you understand like the first first three bullet points? I guess there are only three. Well, yeah, I was like, trying to understand like more about why the inclusion to these so yeah, why so, it's set free if it if it's the device, GCD? Yeah. yeah, so GCD is like the device is a value that divides all of the values yeah. in, the, in the sequence. In the sequence. Right. So if so that means that value divides all the values in the sequence, which means if an ant has that strength value or S value, then they win every fight against the other ant. Especially if it's like the same value, you can also divide it into each other. Could it also be oh no, no, no. Yeah, this is like a, this is an only like, like, that's exactly what we're talking about. So, so you have a bunch of cases. Oh well, no, my solution is really elegant. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> so is your elegant solution. Yeah, you can write it elegant. Sure. But like yeah, so you have a new case. GCD and your old two GCDs, right? Your new GCD is going to be lesser than equal to the old GCDs. So, if your new GCD is equal to the GCD in the right one, then your count, then the, all of the count in the right one is going to count towards the larger segment. Right. And the same goes for the left one. I keep saying this is right, which is bad. So, well, in C++, you can just use the equal equals, which you turn the Boolean to, and then I guess implicitly change it to zero or one, and then multiply that by the count. So if GC, new GCD is equal to the left GCD, then you count the left count. And if the GCD is equal to the right GCD, then you count the right count. <laughs> I don't have a... I, I don't I don't put D F here. So it's it's, it's, cool. it's just nothing. Cool. Yeah, but actually they should make this language, honestly. Yeah, this is pretty <laughs> Oh wait, what? Oh wait, oh yeah, that's the entire solution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just so um, I have a question. Would anything be that different about this problem if we replaced the divide by less than and then GCD by like min? And would you ask that? Divide by less than. So that just means it's min. Yeah, that would just be the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you have that thing where it's like if it's less than and they're both somehow less than, or like one or the other, it deletes all the other. I see options. you're generalizing it to a partial order. Yeah. <laughs> I guess this is a partial order. Well, it's a lattice. A lattice is a partial order with CCD. For the beyond. <laughs> What is, wait, what is but, but I don't know. <laughs> All right, but does does this make sense now? Okay, then now things are gonna be harder, and I guess sometimes we're sleepy. Thank you, Oh, All right, lazy propagation. I I think I spelled it right. Okay, now we want to do range updates. So instead of update i x, we do update i j x. We add x to all of f sub i to f sub j. Which sounds difficult and is difficult. Okay, so how lazy propagation works is for each segment on the segment tree, we keep track of a lazy value, which is a value that is supposed to be added to every element in the segment. Uh, just leave that for now. And we only process lazy values. I missed an S here, but yeah, when we have to, and that's why it's called lazy. And we'll see what that means later. But for now, to process the lazy value, we update the segment sum appropriately and then push lazy values down to your subsegments. Okay, let's see. Uh, I think I have an. Yeah, I have, uh, I have this uh, example. So suppose we want to update this range with some x. Here, 
uh, these purple nodes denote an outstanding lazy value. So as we said, we only process lazy values when we have to, so we might have some lazy values in our tree that we haven't touched, we haven't processed. So these are those values. And uh, so it's the same thing. We start from the root and then it's the same thing as a query. If we update the value of the node, if it's complete inside our range. So we first go to our left node and we see that there's an outstanding lazy value. So we process that and then we push them, push the lazy value to the Trojan is what I said in the previous slide, but uh, I'll try to explain it soon. And then we continue going down a tree. The left node, the left half of that segment is outside the range, so we don't care about it. When we go to the right half, and there's an outstanding lazy value, so we process that, push it to the subsegments, and then we keep going. And then after updating the child, child, we want to update its parents too. And then we do the right half. This is the same thing. And then we update every node that has to be updated. Okay, and now let's look at the pseudocode. Uh, so we said to process the lazy value, we want to update the segment sum appropriately. And what does appropriately mean? The value is supposed to be added to every element in the segment. So if we have a summation update, then the lazy value means we have to add this lazy value to every element in the segment. Then what does that mean? to the sum of the whole segment. It adds number of elements in the segment times that lazy value. Does this one line make sense? So the lazy value, as we said, denotes a value that is supposed to be added to every single element in the segment. Yeah. Like it's like a to do later. Yeah. Are you going to do like in between two different updates? Well, they can accumulate. Like, uh, like you push. So after you process the lazy value, you push it to the left and right subsegments, right? And if you don't go down there, you won't ever process those lazy values. So they stay there as outstanding lazy values, right? So, yeah, like, and then the next yeah. time you come back, you might push push more lazy value onto that subsegment, but you won't process them until you visit that node. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in this case, yes, because it's addition. Yeah. Here, like when you push it, you just add it to their lazy values. Do you want to do it? Uh, I'll try. Oh, I forgot to do the implementation for ant colony. Yeah, sure. I'll do it later if we got time. But uh, I suppose we start with four zeros. Then our seg tree is like this okay uh initially they're all zeros and then suppose we want to uh, add one to all three of these so like update uh, two to four with one okay then right now is that yeah. right now there's no lazy value, so we just we just do it. So this range, uh, we're at this node. There's nothing to do here. And then we go to this node. There's nothing to do here, and then we get to this node and we update it with one. Is that a lazy one? Well, at the bottom layer. No, actually, when you get to a node that is complete inside the range, you set the lazy to one and then you process it immediately. And if it's the bottom node, processing it is just adding one to its sum. And then when you go up, you have to update the values of your parents. So now this is one, this is, 
this is plus one for now. And then you go down the right branch. This node is completely inside the range. So mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So you set lazy to one and then you immediately process it. And how you process it is by adding a pro an appropriate amount to your sum. In this case, adding one to every element in the segment is adding the length of the segment times the lazy value. So now it's two. And then you push the lazy values to your children. And then you reset the lazy values. Right. Reset the lazy value. They, yeah, they'll get better later. Otherwise, it'd be over. Yeah, right now they're just lazy values. And then since you've update, updated the value, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry. Whatever. Okay, I can't get this to work. Oh, you can't push the yellow. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. But since you have a plus two here, you you update this node too with yellow. Oh. <laughs> so now it's three. Uh I guess this is not. Really, that great of an example is it? Uh, remember when you update your left and right node, right child, you uh, merge their results back up so you get an updated value. So, what happens if I now want to say, like, subtract two from every single element? Okay. Uh, so, you're saying update every element with a negative two? Yeah. Let's see. So maybe uh, Trevor and David uh, with you go out, you check with like all the different groups over there. I think I know you. Let me find it. So when you update some some node, I guess this is single, this is a point update. But after you update something in your children, you have to update the value of your current node so it stays updated. So it's the newest value. And this is a non lazy Yeah. I think I want to see it like it's because you know that um, basically everything underneath it is just you don't touch it, but you know that the overall case is changing from zero, the overall sum is changing from zero to two. So that means you can update the nodes above it because you know information about the segment, even though you don't know information about the parts of the segment. So the, the yeah. second layer, one on the right, you know what that value is, is two now. So you can update everything above it, and everything above it will be accurate. But anything below it is like to be later. No, because you no. stop as soon as the segment is fully contained inside. The, yeah, you don't wait. Like, you don't do like all ends of the like all ends of the loops. You don't. Yeah, so let, let's look at the example where you update the entire. Wait, actually, uh, sure. Just the root node. Yeah, so. So it's it would because, be like yeah, it's because you can break every segment into login parts or add two login parts. Right? Yeah. And then when you propagate up, it's okay. it's also logic. But okay, let's look at let's look at this update though. So since since this node is completely inside the range, we do the thing, right? We set its lazy value. Yeah, set its lazy value and immediately process it. And by process it, it we mean add negative two times four to the sum. So this is now negative five. And then we push the lazy value down. So you see that we don't actually go down the tree anymore. We are done. Yeah, but so right now these nodes at the bottom are not updated, right? So 
this node should have a value of negative one, but right now it has an actual value of zero and a lazy value of one. And its parent has a lazy value of two. So, so how do you make sure we get the correct value when we query this single node? So like, what if we call query three, three? This should give us the sum of this range, which is just the actual value of this node. Yeah, so when, when you go down the tree, you process the lazy valleys. Okay. Pardon? Yeah, right now it's zero because we just processed it. So uh, here, nothing happens. And then we go, you go to here. And then it's still not complete inside the range, but we have to process the lazy value first. So now this becomes two plus negative two times two. So now this becomes negative four. <laughs> negative. You're so smart. <laughs> and then you have to push that negative two down. So this so becomes this negative like, one. Negative one. Accumulating the so yeah. Can, so now this has to accumulate. You can. So in this case, you just add. But if you have like a min thing, yeah. And then when you get here, you process this lazy value, which sets its actual value to negative one. And then you would return negative one. So you like maintain the invariance that the real value of a given like, like lowest level leaf node is always equal to the value like in stored there plus the sum of all the values on the path from the leaf to there. For the, for the time complexity, maybe, just maybe, it's more intuitive if you look at the code. So, uh, so we just define this push, which is what we call processing the lazy value, right? So we update the sum of the segment appropriately with the number of elements times the lazy value. And then if there are children to the segment, we accumulate the lazy values there. And then we reset the lazy value of the current segment. So there's no recursion in this process. process so this is L1. Uh, this is is there an insertion for the segment that you can push to or log in? Yeah. Uh, push is a something that will sub operation that will be used by the update and so uh, let's see. So the, push will be run login. Okay, so the this login. is the new update function. It looks a lot like our query because it is a range update and we had the range query. So this part, the non red part, looks almost exactly the same. If it's outside, then you don't do anything. If it's complete inside, you do something. And then if it's only intersecting, then you do the left and you recurse on left and right, and then you merge the values back up. And then as we said before, every time we get to a node, we process whatever outstanding lazy value is there first. And then if the segment is complete inside, then we set its lazy value and then process it. And then these are both O of 1. So this is the same time complexity as the query you had before, which is O of log n. And the same thing for query, we just added a process the lazy values to the beginning of it. So does it make sense? That yeah. Because we've, because so in push, you you reset the lazy in push. So you after you process it, you basically got rid of it. Yeah. And then I don't know why I ordered it this way, but I had something else here. Yeah, so this is the push you would have for summation updates and summation queries. And a hard part of lazy propagation is to figure out what do you mean by appropriately update the segment sum. So if you have minimum updates and maximum queries, actually, I'll let you think about it. So if you minimize every element in a segment with some x, then what happens to the maximum over all of that segment? So, uh, what's the update of like with no segment trees, just like 
is describe O of n wise, like what's the update? Okay, so if you have an array f, the update is to update for a range i to j with x is f sub i, f sub k equals min of f sub k and x for all k and i to j. So if a number <laughs> if a number in the range is greater than x, it's equal like, to x. If it's smaller than x, like you keep it as the value. K oh, and yeah. i and j. This is what k. math I'm taking for now. Is if you had a mountain range and then you decided that to lop off the entire yeah, yeah. 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 Then what happens to max of f of i to j? I mean, I guess with the visualization Jacob just came up with, shouldn't be too hard to see. Not necessarily. What if all of them are lower than x? Then what? If it's hard, are they are they less than a second? It's either like the whole max or the or the all these x. Right. So, so it's, it's the minimum two. teams, the two. So you, if you want to update the value, you Take the minimum of the whatever max it was with the lazy value, right? And then to push it down, you still do minimum because lazy values accumulate like that. Mm. And then make sure when you reset it, you set it to the identity of the operation. And in the case of minimum, it's infinity. That took it. Probably 30 minutes to do, but I'm super proud of it. Can I explain the Oh, it's it's like a bunch of overlapping colored rounded rectangles. <laughs> oh, wait, I explained it already. Okay. okay, for so the purple rounded rectangles. <laughs> right, or are the unprocessed ones. So, so this, this is like from a previous operation. Yeah, from yeah. previous operations. And then for this range, start from the root, go to the left, process that, go to the right, process that, go to the right, that's inside. We update it and then update it, update it. Go to the right, go to the left. Oh, that's that's inside, update it. Go to the right, go to the left, process that, update it, and then update parent, update parent, update parent. So blue is updated, purple is lazy value exists. Yeah. This looks like this looks like one. This looks like most of the tree, but actually in a big binary tree, it's like not a big tree. I mean, it's just going down a tree, going up the tree, going down a tree, going up the tree. Well, I guess you can say that. Wait, Jason, what was your question? Oh. Okay, so are, are you talking about like, uh, this purple versus this white. Yeah. So this purple was here before. So that's an out a lazy value that hasn't been processed. Uh, that's from like a previous update. It, it was left there. And it hasn't been updated. Like it's like in this case, this negative one is never updated. So it just stays there until we we get to that node. But we never got to that node because as soon as we got to this node. It's already inside the range, so we update it and nothing below it is touched. So they stay the same from before. So basically blue, all the blue is like everything that was processed and now currently updated to the current current to reflect the current state of the array. And purple is oh, yeah, correct. Yeah. You don't need to go to all of it. So like all the white stuff is like what was left. Thank you.
Yeah, but if you do want to query them, then you will you will get to those nodes and update the values. Yep, still a login. Okay, now this is a another example. Solution. Update the range with bitwise or and query the range with bitwise and. Does do do this operation with them? Okay. So the only hard part in this, I guess, is is like what what happens to the entire segment if you update every element with some x. So if you bitwise or every element with x, what happens to the bitwise n of the segment? Yeah, so I mean you could you could do Boolean algebra like like a or x and v or x and I'm talking about this c or x is a and b and c or x if you know Boolean algebra. Uh, no, that's no, just no. combined. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just expansion, and then yeah. just. It is kind of cool though that like when you think of or is kind of like kind of like an add, but it's not. Yeah. And and is definitely is a multiplier. Yeah. And they both distribute over the stuff. Yeah. yeah. The neutral distribution is very important. Yeah, but I guess intuitively, oring, uh, bitwise oring with x, you make sure you're making sure every bit in x is in that number. Then, then you made sure that every bit in x is in every number. Then the bitwise or bitwise n will have that number. Will have every bit in that number. So when you when you do push, the new value of this entire segment is ordered by the lazy value. Yeah, and then the identity for bit my store is zero. And then when you push it, right, it's not instead of adding, you're going to do, if it's already been set, right, as a lazy value, then you don't need to set it again, so you can do or, and then if it's, if it's not, it's, yeah. Okay, no. Oh yeah, and return and merge is just banding the two the two things, and that's that's another problem. You you. I, I wonder you how many code words are found in name. Good array. Many, many how many good substrings? Good array. Good subarrays. Good subsequences. <laughs> you, you can look at it, but this problem is literally. Literally, just what we talked about bitwise or updates and bitwise and queries, and that's exactly what we did. Coin thing, coin, 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 and it is actually possible to do this without using lazy propagation, but that is left as an exercise. I actually because, know this fact because, because I did it without it without lazy propagation, even though I found this problem under the lazy propagation section. Yeah, I think it was before I learned lazy prop. So, is it because the number of bits is small? Okay, so I guess that's the end of the presentation. But I. Uh, I mean the problem difficulty tag or rating rating suggests you you don't need to know lazy propagation. But I mean, if you know lazy propagation, this problem becomes really easy. But lazy propagation is. An advanced topic. Advanced topics. All right. And yeah, that's the feedback form. And uh, these are some practical resources. And these are the actual solutions that I intended to type up. So I, I guess yeah. I will do that right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's do end colony if we remember what that was. I don't. Yep, that's GCD. Okay, so 
Let's take the input first. Wait, is this like some forces made in oh, dark mode? Or are you... Nope, that's my dark mode. Wait, how do you do that? What, what is that? <laughs> I love this program. Ooh, it's yeah. called Snip Paste. It's yeah. this. Snip, snip it's <laughs> so good. Well, yeah, this uh, is amazing. Yeah. I'm going to write that. Okay, so uh, I already put a little bit things here. So we have the red. Oh, uh, that's input. <laughs> Wait, was that a joke? That was. <laughs> All right, so I already read N and I already read S. And uh, I guess I, I, I read T that now and then. Uh, okay, so actually, I guess I have to first talk about how I implement or how smart people implement it in a good way. <laughs> Which is so if you if you looked at my uh, pseudo code, I did like sec dot val, sec dot left, something like that. Right? Sec dot lazy, sec dot length. We just put all of those in arrays and uh, and uh, use an index to denote which node we're on. So like since our segment tree is a full binary tree. We can just sequentially index them. So the root node will be one, and then the next layer will have two and three. Next layer will have four, five, six, seven. And this has a really good property where the last child is two times, I guess, i, two i. And the right child is two i plus one. And you can check that as, as two times two. That's two times two plus one. That's two times three. And I believe you can do the math. So, so instead of storing all of these in like a struct or something, we just we can have like a val array and then a lazy array. And then we don't even need to store these. We can just calculate them on the fly. And then for seg.left, that's just two times whatever current index is on. And then seg.right is, uh, I can't write on this, but I hope you get it. Okay. And, okay, so as I said before, the total number of nodes is less than 2n, right? So I can just int, I just call it seg, which, okay, I'll call it value, I guess value of two times max n suffice, but this, I actually don't understand this, but it doesn't work. You have to do four times max n. <laughs> that's, Sometimes you might access, right? But uh, the, the technically you would Rounding up to a power of two, maybe? I, I don't know. We're technically, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is no, it? No, is it the rounding? Yeah, that, that would make more sense. Because the thing is, like, the, the, the way that you do it, it actually compresses it enough. Like it does mm, compress it. Like, it compresses it to to n. Not I don't even know. To, it's like sealed to to the whatever. Oh, you mean like like even if we're only using like parts 13. of binary. We're using like thirteen to twenty six, the first twenty six values, which is really interesting. Yeah, it, it it wraps with that. Okay. So it goes from so thirteen would be. Uh, I'm a little skeptical 16, of this plane actually. Yeah, 15 to 26. I'm going to write this stuff out. Though. Be rest assured. I don't know what they're talking about either. Yeah, exactly. So instead of a perfect binary tree, you have a perfect binary tree and you chop off at the bottom. Yeah, that's 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 a full binary tree. I searched it out. That's the correct term. It's a full binary tree. Anyway, a full binary tree. Robert, I, the wait, Robert I, I think I disagree with your play. Oh, this is what I run in code for. So. <laughs> Uh, okay. Can't really argue with code. Like, right? I know. I, I, I think I disagree with your claim that it would only go up to twenty six, right? Because, so at the bottom layer, where there's on the bottom layer, there's sixteen. 
So it's like one, two, four, eight, 16 at the bottom layer. Um, so we're going to need to go up until the 13th number from the left at the, on the bottom layer. And that's 13 plus 16, or 12 plus 16, which is 18, way bigger than 13, uh, which is like, right, uh, sorry, 13 plus 16 is 28 or 29. Um, I guess it would be 12 plus that. So you, you have to go up to 28. You not 26. To, yeah. Focus to the implementation. Yeah, there, there's, there's yeah, no, no, but, but you have to go up to 28 if you want to do 13. Yeah, but why do you have to have those nodes in the second bottom? Uh, well, it's, you don't put anything in them, but you need to have them or else like you're, you won't be, have a simple mapping from where you are in the tree to uh, like what index in the array it should be. Like, well, I was assuming if you're like cutting off the bottom nodes here, then you can also cut off. Yes, yeah, so you can you can cut them off, but like let's say you're like, all right, I want to shift them over in the array. Now your formula for like what? Uh, oh, it's not like two times anymore. Yeah, yeah, now you now store, you can so you that. store the array. You can store a thirteen long array from fourteen to twenty six. You store a thirteen long array from fourteen to twenty six. Fourteen has no children. Yeah, the left child and no red child. No, but how does that how's that gonna work with the segment? Because it does destruct. It does because you have some way of like counting that as this as the left edge of the oh okay. That then sure. Then it should have compressed it. Fine, fine. But that that trick is a little bit more complicated. Though. Really I, don't, complicated I don't think that's what I don't think that's what you were thinking of. But Okay, sure. So, when you so, up on test, so okay, I believe I believe you that this trick exists. Yeah. But it's like another layer. Layer. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So I think it works. Does it work for ladies here? I think so. No idea. But uh, I I realized we did something wrong because we we're actually storing two values in our sanctuary. So I want this to be a pair of pins. pins. What's that? Yeah, right. Sure. But but I want to make my merge a single or like make my merge more beautiful. Does it make it more beautiful? Dot, dot, dot first dot and dot second. 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 Yeah, 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 right. You're right. Oh shoot, what did I do? <laughs> I just switched it in. Uh what's this? And okay. I can't call it G C D. I just I hate it. <laughs> I just, oh, no. <laughs> no. Count. All right, so we have a GCD and a count for each segment, and then let's let's just copy paste our merge. Wait, no, I want to use the pair because I want to return a single thing from our merge. Uh, wait, what, what happened? So if you want it to be really beautiful, you should make a truck that has a number called GCD. Don't, no, <laughs> that is that is not how it works. <laughs> Then you can have macros and define. Yep, GCD. that's what I'm gonna do right now. First, but don't maybe don't wait. wait this is gonna this is gonna be pretty funny. Jesus, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> nope. No, 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 I, no, I no. already foresee it coming. <laughs> uh, what's the second one? Count second. Wait, this is Good. so Good. crazy Good. smart. Yeah. It's so crazy. Smart. Okay. So pair. <laughs> Merge. And then... Oh, wait. Oh, no. Uh, what's this? The vowel? You're right. I don't know what that's supposed to mean because it's still. Type up is safer. No, this is great. No, this is great. This is fine. Okay. Uh, it's pretty nice that DS code is like actually actually no, figures out what you're marking. Uh, I so what? Where am I? Where where am I? Delete. D I up to right this. Front, sorry. D I right. Front. <laughs> okay, no A, no B. I also use Neo code. Okay, uh, I use Neo Neo Oh, Neo Neo. Is that a plugin? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Okay, what happens? Return make pair uh, so GCD is the GCD of a dot GCF dot GCF, and then the count is G. No, uh, I hate this. Okay. Int GCD prime is the GCD of a dot GCF and b dot GCF. I might call it. Okay. What? Okay. Uh, and then this is uh, and then if GCD is equal to a dot GCF. No. <laughs> but you don't need them to make pairs. But I'm gonna stop. No, stop. Wait, you can just use you can just use curly braces. You don't even need. Oh yeah, you can just use. You don't even right? need to make pairs. I don't. I don't want to do it. You don't need to make pairs. Look at it. That's more elegant, isn't it? <laughs> it's still an error. So why what? An error? Why? Why does it do that? Uh, so you have another comment. Plus. Oh. What? <laughs> oh, you didn't notice? I have I, I don't want to move my hand off the home row ever, so I have plus, minus, semicolon, oh question mark, braces, parent. I, oh. I can tab out of parentheses, brackets, and okay. then what else is there? Okay. That's just there. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, colon, semicolon. But that yeah. is kind of, that's Equal. a good idea though. I always miss on those on the keys that aren't letters. Yeah, it, it's worse for me because I don't I don't use my pinky when I type. So oh, I also don't. Know. I cannot aim I at colon ever. Uh, wait, but colon is just your pinky. I don't use it. <laughs> I use my <laughs> ring finger to, to type it. I okay. Try, I try to train myself a little bit to type key with a pinky. Yeah, yeah. I can oh. never. I know it's with your ring finger. Okay. Wait, how do you take with my ring finger? Yep, that's what I do. <laughs> okay, let's, let's implement query now. Query, what what do we return? We return a node query. Okay, so query, we have like a left and right bound, and then we want to know which segment we're on. And our root segment is one. So we just want to default to do that. And then I said, we're going to keep track of our length on the fly. But instead of length, we're going to keep track of the left of our segment, the right index of the segment. Okay. For the root segment, that's 0 and n minus 1. Does, does everyone agree? Uh, no. So I think for, for lazy prop, don't you have to make n a power of 2 if you're going to do this? Uh, I've never done Oh, this that. isn't lazy prop. This is lazy. not, but I also don't need that. You don't do that even for lazy prop? No. Lazy prop is just adding some function calls. So that shouldn't okay, change fine. anything. Yeah. Maybe you have a different implementation. Yeah. No, 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 I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Okay. So it's just like a length of the next part of the two and then So you can't do fit operations. Well, that's only First case is if our segment is completely outside the range. So our segment is from L to R and the range is from I to J. So if our right bound is to the left of the left bound of the range, so that's R is less than I, or the other way around, J is less than L, then we, we're, we want to return an identity value. In this case, we can return there. And then if our segment is complete inside, and so L R inside of I J, so I less than equal to L and okay, so that's kind of an interesting question on its own. What's the identity for G? Yeah, it's the zero work. I mean zero works, but yeah, no, zero does that zero make like correct. mathematical sense? I'm not completely. Yeah, C G D of zero and X is X. Uh, 
Okay. Well, we, so if it's complete inside, we return the value of the current node. Otherwise, we recurse down, right? But then realize that you have to calculate our. So we're calculating left and right bound on the fly. So we need like a middle, right? And then pass it as the new L and R to our recursive function calls. But as lazy I, as I am, I define a function for that. So the... Uh, it's, it's very <laughs> also the the way I define this this will not overflow because if you have l plus r over two it can overflow so this is safe but can you have ever have a seg tree with a billion um, in in that group? this makes me feel superior okay <laughs> okay so we, oh, yeah, now we have a middle. And then we always define our left as L to M inclusive and right as M plus one to R inclusive. So query no, return merge of query I, J, same range, but now left segment L, M. Does everyone agree with this line? I never know whether or not to add it. Yeah, because the mid round. Does this line uh, make sense? So seg times two is the left segment, and this is our, this is what the indices are. I I do that, but like Justin called me like a sh show off or something. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now we're done with query. We also want to since. We don't have updates. We can just we can have a build thing, which basically says update every node, every update every element with this array, and we can actually do that in O of n by just traversing the segment tree as so. Are there no updates? Yeah, there are no updates. Mm -hmm. You can do this in a sparse array. Yeah, but segment tree is more versatile. Yeah, yeah. Update <laughs> build. And uh, you don't need any anything. Because I was typing the actual equals. I just switched to coding in VS Code today. So it's I'm still transitioning from IntelliJ, which I didn't have Vim on. Because I was having trouble typing in IntelliJ because I started using Vim recently. I was I keep typing J and K. So uh, shift yeah. All right. Make sure like if you're willing to put your finger on that key, there's a little yeah. like why why would you not put the plus there? Okay, so if L is equal to R, then we've reached the individual node for that element, then uh, what is it? Value at that segment is equal to uh, GCD is the value of the node, and then count is y. With this. this is open, by the way. Yeah, this basically initializes everything with whatever is in S, the array S. When you could just write an update update function and then update every index with it. But this, this is open, but I guess it wouldn't matter if you're using a segment tree anyways, because you're expecting a login time complexity. Oh, 
Oh yeah, no, this is the four the smaller numbers and multiplied two times in time. So the one that requires a okay. So this this is um, the number of ants that are set free, but we want the ants that die. So it's just wait, take this out. Mark all this. Surround it with parentheses. R minus L plus. So that's the total number of elements in the range from L to R inclusive, and then minus the one that I set free. So that should be it. Uh, so the output is four four one one, and I got completely incorrect values of five four three two. Wait, that's the that's the exact wrong answer I got earlier today. Great. Let's see what we got wrong. What are we initializing? Oh, I did not build. That's the exact same mistake I did <laughs> <laughs> earlier, too. Okay, uh, let's compile again. What is this? Why four, two, two? <sighs> Why is there one cup? So weird. This alpha is interleaved because it's always fast off. Yeah. Fast alpha. Fast yeah, it works on IntelliJ in the way like I input everything and then it prints everything, but uh, I might have to fix this somehow. Well, no, just use, well, you don't use the alpha, but if you use fast alpha, it wasn't one. Oh, um, yeah, you could just, just okay. put that in. Yeah. Well, I can just cheat. Let's see what's, what's in here. <laughs> oh, I didn't merge it back. Wait, wait, no, I don't even have an update. Oh, I, I have to merge it in build. Like after I uh, like set the values of the yeah. Trojan segment, I have to I have to valid seg merging of valid. Now it should work. Cheating. Yep, four, four, one, one. Why does it not terminate though? <laughs> Wait, is it is it because of why it wasn't terminating? Four four one one one. That's weird. Uh, is it because? Oh, uh, T and uh, you have N instead of T. Oh no. My perfect solution. This is why I strong. always see two holes. My main only contains a loop on numbers. Uh, although sometimes this wouldn't solve your problem no oh, okay so that's and colony and uh, oh this is, this is so much worse this is lazy lazy prop can i do this in time you know that, so. <laughs> well i can actually do this check this out it is no! i mean i can just go through it real quick mid is the same thing update this is this is on the slide Push, it's also on the slides. Wait, it's, everything's on the slides. Yeah, except for the, you know, oh, yeah, but except for how I implement it. But now that you understand how I implement it, val seg is this seg dot val, and then seg times two is seg dot left, seg times two plus one is seg dot right. I was just thinking about it. What's that? <laughs> because we had to store two values in, in the same. No. <laughs> yeah, so we can make a pair. It's like... Wait, what's that? We can make a pair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a pair for Valley and Lazy? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to add them anyway. You do. <laughs> I think two arrays is more efficient than an array of pairs because 
Actually, no, because the story can take the story continuously, so it's better for the cat. I feel like I've gotten worse performance with Paris. Maybe Paris is bad. What if you just multiply everything by two? Paris should just literally be a star. What if you just multiply everything by two? Um. Yeah. You do not write a stress. Yeah, that's that's a bad. Paris should just literally be a stress. What? So okay, yeah, all right, maybe you're right. One notable thing is that here the identity value is the bit string of all ones because our query is for a range and bitwise and. So the identity of bitwise and is the bit string of all ones. So all ones and anything is that entity. And the maximum. Yeah. Does, does, does that make sense? Because we want the identity of the operation, right? So like the bit string of all ones and x equals x, always. Expand the segment to like a power two, right? Like, what would you put in this like empty values? So the way he's doing segment three actually is, is more like it's like let's say so he's gonna if you look at just look at how the functions are defined like this is like zero well the mid is six so, okay. so this is gonna be like the left half and this is gonna be the right half so notice how they don't have the same number of them. Right? This one has seven. And this side is six. So so like it's it becomes like a weird, it's not, it's like a left leaning key. Right? I think my my yeah, it's the other way. Oh, it's you the other just way? Flip it. Yeah, it's you it's mirror. Larger numbers are like wait, it's, it's, is it? No, 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 no. If you if you're doing mid, if you're doing mid and then if you're doing left to mid and then mid plus one to right, then it's like, oh, I guess sure. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking like sealed, like floor and divine. So so now this is this has like this has like seven, six, it's like three, three, and then here these each become like three. I think his mid is just packed with it. No, yeah, but 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 his mid becomes the right index in the in the in the second right? So if we had zero to 12, that means six. So now we have the, the segment zero to six and seven. To seven. And so like the, the segments are not all, um, the segments are not all the same size. So that, that's why that's like that. Yeah. No, but like in general, we just kind of like fill the tree with like a power two. And like we kind of fill like the end of the tree with like some values, right? Oh, you would want to fill them with the identity. Yeah, if you want to do a roundup to power two. Things. Is there always like an identity? Like two um, that's a very good question. I so first of all, like like just abstractly, what do we need for a segment tree to work? Right, we need our operator to be associated because the segment tree is kind of is like arbitrarily <laughs> rearranging the order, not the the order left to right of things, but the order in which we do the operation, and the property that you can arbitrarily rearrange. The order that you do the operations of the right? It's like if I do the min over here, and I do the min over here, and I do the yeah. min over here, it's all the same. Thing. Um, now you're you're asking, so we need an associative operation for a section. You're asking, could that associative operation not have an identity? I would imagine you could think of a case where it wouldn't have an identity. Um, but but here's one thing that you can do. You can I think you can always augment your your thing with an identity. You can you can make a special value called identity and then your operation will be like if if uh, left equals identity, return like, right. And then you want to react. Yeah. yeah, it's like only artificial examples where you don't have to this like the ring of integers of even integers with multiplication multiplication doesn't have another question. So like use the propagation for like ring updates. 
Yes. Yeah. Is it? It seems like kind of complicated. Is it a lot easier to do? You can I'm do some ranges. Uh, some higher things. Oh, sorry. Like SUM. If you're only interested in SUM sum, then you can do it easier by you instead store like what's the difference between like elements in your array. Oh, right. Yeah. Is it like in general? Uh, I don't think there's a better data structure than lazy prop for general like associative operations and range updates. Um, for associative and reflexive. Oh, actually, for updates now, log entry. Yeah. But if you don't have updates and your operation is reflexive, so not addition, like minimum, maximum, then you can use sparse statement for O1. But it's, log in but it's also n log in store. It's like yeah. Com, uh, space yeah. Sparse state. Uh, sparse state. Sparse state like, but I've never used it. In it's like barely used. Though. Very yeah, rarely. Like you can use it for old one LCA, but no one ever does that. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can, which is cool. Which yeah, is cool because you can useless. store. You can store Euler tour of a tree. Oh, so that thing. Like that. Yeah. And you do LCA. I don't remember very You just do. You, you find min. Right, you find min yeah. over an interval. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to clean up my. You don't want to clean up your marvelous proof. Yeah. That can that can fit in the margin. Zero. 